Welcome to the Dear NICU Mama podcast. This podcast is a safe place to connect with other NICU moms by listening to interviews with trauma-informed medical and maternal mental health experts, remarkable stories from the NICU, and intentional roundtable conversations. Our hope is that you feel like you're sitting across the table from another NICU sister and feel seen and validated in your experience. No matter where you are on your healing journey, this podcast is here to remind you that you are not alone. Welcome to the sisterhood. Oh, well, happy Wednesday. It is a beautiful sunny day here today. It is 90 degrees outside. Um, it, the daycare provider um, asked that we bring Silas a swimsuit. Yay. It's going to be so hot today. So it's going to be a good day. Good summer day. Yes. How are you doing today? I am doing great. I am going to go to a farm later today with Ava. So you can also be outside and enjoy some farm animals and we're excited for summer, man. We just spend all the waking hours we can outside. So, Amen. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Well, we have a very special episode this week. It is one of our favorites, which we call our Mama's Call-In episodes. Those are very beloved by Aisha and I because we get to hear from all of you. And so in honor of Father's Day coming up, we thought it would be fun to give the moms in our community an opportunity to brag about their NICU dads and partners in their life and just kind of share about times that they really stood out as a partner and also as a NICU parent. And we also want to be really sensitive to the fact that we understand that some of you listening here, your partners were unavailable throughout your stay um, or when you came home, and this topic can be very tender and complicated. And so if this is an episode that your heart is not ready for, please know that you don't have to listen, but also know that this sisterhood honors your parenthood story and your courage as a NICU parent. And so you are so loved by us. We understand that this holiday might be tender. Um, and so just know that we see you and we love you. So, Aisha, we had quite a few submissions come through. We did. It's so fun to see them all. I am really excited to dive into these. We also have some voicemails to play at the end, but I thought it could be fun to maybe just start and talk about our own NICU dads in our life yeah. and how our partners kind of stepped up throughout our stay and after. So, Aisha, do any stories for you come to mind? I'm sure there's millions. Andy's a gem. So many, so many. <laughs> but one that stands out for me is um, we had been maybe in the NICU for about, like, very beginning. It must have been within a week of Ava being born and us kind of getting used to our surroundings as staff and everything and mm -hmm. I remember I felt so out of sorts I didn't really comprehend I couldn't wrap my head around what was going on and um yeah I just remember I am not a very confrontational person I'm not a very <laughs> um I, I just kind of sit quietly and like let everyone else take charge and so <laughs> I remember being really scared because I didn't know how to um ask the right questions or understand what was going on um and I remember Andy they were doing something with Ava and he was Basically, he he told they were like I, whether they were taking the temperature, something they were doing. And Andy basically tells the nurse, you're doing it wrong. You're not supposed to do oh. it that way. This is how you do it. And he like proceeds to like take over and like finish the care. <laughs> and the nurse looks at Andy and she goes, uh, excuse me, are you are you like um, do you have a background in like medicine or anything and Andy's like no I've just been paying attention and <laughs> she was like wow okay like you know what you're doing um and like she kind of like applauded him and said like good on you dad like you, you know <laughs> That's so, awesome. thanks for catching that and like kind of yeah they kind of joked about it a little bit and I just remember sitting there and saying like for the first time I could take a breath because I said okay mm -hmm. I may not have this, but he he's got this. Like he knows yeah. what he's doing and he demonstrated in that moment like he can take charge of this 
until I'm ready to Mm -hmm. kind of step in. And so I felt safe in that he was going to manage it for the time being. Um, So those that was one of the many ways where he just showed up. And I think it was his way of saying, like, this is how I can show up, you know, like, yeah. I yeah. can pay attention. I can ask the questions. Like, I'll do that. Mm-hmm. That's something that I'm good at. And so I was able to just kind of surrender that to him and, like, say, okay, we're good. So, yeah. Like, I have a partner. I have a teammate yes. who's going to help me navigate this. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. That's so fun, too, because Andy's, like, he's so kind, yes. like, as a person. So envisioning him being, like, you're doing it wrong is so awesome. Oh, because my gosh. Like, he just took charge. He did. It was, like, definitely a side of him that I had not gotten to see before. Like, that paternal, You, like, fell in love yeah. all over oh again. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. Yes. How about you, Ash? How I, I'm sure t- you two just have so many stories of Rye. I mean, you've shared some already that I'm always like mm-hmm. weepy when I read on your <laughs> Instagram, just how Rye has shown up for you in this mm-hmm. journey. So do you have any that stand out that you would like to share? Yeah, I mean, I think I think one recurring one that I even saw kind of in the um submissions was just the fact that so many of us as moms were on so many medications Mm -hmm. and like you just mentioned you're so out of it and that's so heartbreaking because you want to be fully present to take in the fact that you're meeting your baby for the first time or you're about to go under surgery and you're about to have a baby and you just don't remember a lot so I think like that always sticks out to me of just the ways that um, our partners had to really like step up and kind of like take mental notes and I shared about it recently for Mother's Day but there's so much of my motherhood story that I just don't remember and so he kind of retells it to me every year Mm -hmm. as many times as I need to because I'm like can you remind me like what happened at this point and why was I under here and and what happened at this point and what was it like to see him and even over the weekend we were with some friends talking about Sai's birth story and I completely forgot this part But um, right away when he was born, they couldn't intubate him, so they had to bag him. Mm -hmm. And so Ryan saw Silas being bagged for like 30 minutes. And I completely, again, just obviously was out, didn't Mm -hmm. know that I was under surgery. And so, but the way he just was like, he didn't, he wasn't scared of it. He just was there and was like, nope, this is my baby. I will be here no matter what. Um. And so that one obviously sticks out to me, but I think um, one in particular was when Silas had his hernias um, in the NICU, he was under like incredible amounts of pain and Silas didn't really cry in the NICU very much. I think that's pretty common, but um, he didn't cry very much. And so there was this period of time where he would cry and it was like this terrible like pain cry like you just knew that he was in pain and sometimes it was like when Silas would cry like that like I would feel like I could vomit like it was like breaking me to know that he was in pain and sometimes I just had to like sit down because it was like so incredibly painful to hear him do that and so Ryan would like I'd be like babe tap in tap in Mm -hmm. because like I have hit my threshold of hearing my baby cry in pain And so he would tap in and he'd let me just sit and I would still be in the room, but knowing that I had someone to carry that load Mm -hmm. in those moments was just like incredibly helpful. Mm -hmm. And I know that it was not easy for him either, but we just kind of had this system of like, okay, tap in. Mm -hmm. I have to tap out for five seconds because my heart is going to burst and I may vomit Mm -hmm. if I have to hear him in pain (laughs) anymore. Um, And so, yeah, I just think like, to the NICU dads that might be listening to this and hopefully you get to hear your partner brag about you for a little bit I just want you to know how remarkable your role is in the NICU and oftentimes it can feel like well what can I do Mm -hmm. um especially as a dad and as a partner and so just know that any any and every time you step up means the world and that your role is invaluable and so we hope that throughout this episode, even if it's not your story, you might recognize parts that you, st- you know, stepped up in a similar way and just how appreciated you are. Um, so it's really easy to brag about our husbands sometimes because I'm like, oh, my gosh, there were so many moments. Yes. Uh, yeah. They I mean, just to piggyback off of what you said to the NICU dads and, you know, Andy and Ryan and, and every NICU dad like you 
you really were um, a rock to mm-hmm. to to support ourselves on, and and I, that isn't easy. Um, and so I also just hope that you all, fathers, NICU dads, are able to give yourselves compassion and grace too. That it wasn't easy, and mm-hmm. you did it. And that it's okay if you also need to take care of yourselves and Mm -hmm. um, lean on your partners um, every once in a while, too. You don't have to be strong all the time. You guys were strong Mm -hmm. enough for us already. And we want to kind of collectively give you permission to lean back on us as well because we are so grateful for the ways that you showed up for us. Um, So Yeah, absolutely. Um, for sure. But we have some really sweet um, letters and voice messages. Um, like yeah, you said, bragging about partners. And so I, um, Ash, do you want to start with the first one or do you? Yeah. Perfect. Let's do it. Okay. First up, we have a submission from Jen. And she writes, as I sit here holding my daughter, who was born at 27 and a half weeks at two pounds and is now 32.6 weeks and four pounds, I can't help but think of how strong my husband has been from day one. I was sick with hypermesis throughout my entire pregnancy and lost who I was along the way. I couldn't do much of anything other than wake up and go to work. My husband worked his full-time job, helped to keep our house running, and took over my part of our small business. Since the day I was called in to get repeat lab work and subsequently sent up to the hill to the hospital for a 24-hour observation, my husband has been calm, cool, and collected. My liver was failing and my brain was in a fog. I couldn't form sentences and was barely coherent. My husband took over everything so I wouldn't have to worry about anything. From dog sitters to canceling doctor's appointments, contacting family members, and setting up meals for us, he's been there for us since before our daughter made her entrance. After we found out our daughter would be born within a few days of our hospital arrival, I was so heavily medicated I couldn't comprehend what was actually happening. For my other preeclampsia moms, I was on the mag, and it hit hard. (laughs) During that time, I had used almost all of my sick time. What I had accumulated would not last me the rest of the school year, and our state has unpaid FMLA. Our daughter was born on a Sunday, and he has been working since that Monday from my hospital room and upon discharge, her NICU room. He arrives every morning at 6.30 a.m. and we leave together around 7 p.m. He helps with cares, takes time for kangaroo care during his lunch hour, and even washes pump parts throughout the day. He does all of this not because he has to, but because he wants to. It would be easier for him to work at home and come visit a few times a week, but instead he sacrifices his comfortability to help our stability. Love that. Mm. We were not expecting to celebrate Mother's Day or Father's Day this year, but I am so thankful we get to and our daughter is healthy and thriving. That's so what wonderful. a wonderful man, Jen. Yes. I love that line too. He sacrificed his comfortability for our stability. Mm-hmm. It is so true. So beautiful. Mm-hmm. Well, next Thanks I have... Thanks for sharing that. Thoughts. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. I have Sarah from Pennsylvania and she wrote in and said... My fiancé, Eric, and I are from Pennsylvania. At the time, we were living in Easton, Pennsylvania. I was diagnosed at 20 weeks with placenta previa. I had five unexplained bleeds from 21 weeks up to my last bleed at 29 weeks and four days. I woke up on the morning of October 25th, 2018, and was already in the hospital overnight for some bleeding, and they wanted to just monitor me. Well, I woke up and I was leaking blood all over. I called him because he was at work at the time and I had been stable and not bleeding. He rushed to the hospital and no sooner than he gets there, they throw scrubs at him yelling, we need to go now. She's losing too much blood. I remember being back in the OR and then doing my, them doing my spinal and moving me from the bed to the table and telling me not to look. Well, I looked and my bed was covered in blood. They bring him to my side and I don't remember much except he is crying and when I asked why, he just shakes his head and tells me he loves me. Our son is born and he rushed away to be with him. It's not till I'm in recovery that he comes in and hugs me crying and tells me, baby, you almost died. They told me to choose who to save and I had to choose you. 
Um, in parentheses, she explains that she has a daughter at home that's not his child, and who was 15 months old. In that moment, I knew how courageous he had to be for both of us. Thankfully, our son survived and is now five years old and thriving. He has some medical issues, but otherwise he is healthy. My man is a true hero, and I won't ever forget him being there every single day, several times a day, to help in the NICU and helping me in any way he can. Since our NICU warrior, we added a little girl to our family and have been trying for our final piece for over two years. Lena is my daughter and Eric's stepdaughter, and he really stepped up for her as well. She is now six. Our NICU warrior is five, and our other daughter is three. Thanks for listening. Mm. That's such a beautiful story. Uh. And also, you know, something that we don't often think about is the decisions that are the, the dads have yeah. to make when we're not able to make those yeah. decisions. So courageous. So courageous. Mm. Thanks for sharing that, Sarah. So beautiful. Um, up next, we have Adrian, and she's from Louisiana, and her husband's name is Curry. One of the most precious moments of my husband during our time in the NICU was his regular midnight and 3 a.m. trips to the NICU to deliver breast milk and spend time with our son. After a three-week hospitalization and hemorrhage that led to a C-section, it was incredibly difficult for me to move around for the first several days postpartum. He would take pictures, record videos, and FaceTime so I wouldn't feel like I was missing out on quality time. He knew how important it was to me for Levi to exclusively have breast milk if medically possible, and he made that desire a reality by delivering breast milk for every feeding. I don't ever remember him complaining about going to the hospital in the middle of the night or about him being tired. He activated dad mode, and I am forever grateful. <laughs> oh, that is so, so beautiful. beautiful. Oh, oh, I love these dads. <laughs> I know. Stepping up, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, so next I have Chloe, and she is from South Wales in the UK. So across the pond. When I saw your Instagram story about NICU partners who'd shown my remarkable courage, I just knew instantly I had to reach out and tell you about my daughter's father. My partner, Simon, was a week shy of his 33rd birthday when our daughter was born at 36 weeks via emergency C-section. We knew there was a good chance of NICU time as although the C-section was an emergency, it was planned three days in advance. In all his almost 33 years, he had never had involvement with children. His younger sisters are the youngest members of his family, and they are both older than I am. No friends with children, no nieces, no nephews. Truly the definition of clueless when it comes to parenting. When our daughter, Holly, was born, the surgeon gave Simon the scissors to cut the cord and then suddenly took them off him before he had a chance to. Before we knew it, the emergency alarms had gone off and a swarm of doctors rushed in on top of the ones already in the theater with us for a preterm delivery. We had absolutely no idea what was going on, and before we knew it, our daughter was having respiratory resuscitation and then whisked off to the NICU. I was taken into recovery and told my partner he had to be with our daughter. She couldn't be on her own and that she needed her dad. Six hours later, I was able to go and see my daughter for the first time. She was on CPAP, and it wasn't working well enough. Our tiny daughter's mouth was full of bubbles from the fluid in her lungs being pushed out. She wasn't moving, her face was swollen, and we were told she would need to be put on a ventilator. With this news came the fact that the hospital we were in was a level 2 NICU, and a level 2 NICU can't look after vent ventilated babies. Our daughter would need to be transferred via ambulance without either of us with her. I had to remain in the hospital that I had delivered in. But somehow my partner, who had never so much as held a baby at this point, followed our daughter's ambulance to another hospital. He spent the night, sat in a chair next to her, holding her hand. By the time I arrived at the hospital after my discharge the next day, my partner was changing her nappies, was explaining what every beep and line on her monitor was for, what mm. every wire <laughs> was for, how much of my colostrum she had already um, had through her tube, what treatment she was having and why showing me where everything was. When I felt like my world had fallen apart, he put it back together without even trying to. Mm -hmm. 
Our daughter is nine months old now and perfectly healthy with no lasting health concerns. To this day, I still look back in awe at how he took it all in stride, completely clueless about everything going on and with no guidance on how to be a dad. Never mind a Nikki dad. He was everything myself and our daughter needed and was rewarded with being the first one to cuddle her when she was allowed (laughs) out of her incubator. (laughs) Polly's dad is my hero, and I have no doubt that she'll be calling him her hero, too. That is so beautiful. Mm. So beautiful. Way to go, Dad. Mm. I love when she said, how did she say, when my world was falling apart, he put it back together. Yeah. So, so beautiful. Up next, we have one from Alexa from Ontario, Canada. She says, hi, my name is Alexa. My husband's name is Josh and our preemie Jack just turned one at the end of May. Our Nikki journey took us to four different hospitals. Thankfully, once I was discharged, there was parent rooms available in the hospitals we traveled to, so I never had to leave until the day Jack was discharged. Through all of it, my husband was steady as a rock, strong, fearless, in control, supportive beyond belief. He would work 12 to 14 hour days and drive the hour every night to come and see Jack and I, even if it was only for 30 minutes. He would do the sweetest things like order me food while he was at work to make sure I ate during the day, stock me up on snacks and clean clothes, and walk with me in the evenings to make sure I got some fresh air. It was so neat to see him bond with Jack. He was hands-on, 100% committed with anything and everything that either Jack or I needed, and still to this day. He is such a great father and an equally amazing husband. Jack and I are blessed beyond belief. Ah, so sweet. I love that story. Next, I have Shannon from North Carolina. She writes in and says, I'm Shannon, mom of three, from Harmony, North Carolina. My fiancé was an amazing stress reliever while our little girl was in the NICU. It was our first time having a baby in the NICU, and no one ever tells you how hard it will be. I stayed up night after night crying and stressed. Our baby girl came out at 25, almost 26 weeks via C-section. We had been in the hospital for about a month prior to having her due to preeclampsia. Once they took her out, He went out of the room to make sure she was okay, too, and to get a picture for me. Five whole hours sitting there after having her, not being able to see her. You can only imagine the feeling, I'm sure. He pushed me to the NICU in the wheelchair to see her, and it was the most wonderful feeling to be able to see our little girl the size of a soda can. He stood there with me by my side, talking to her. It made my heart beyond happy just hearing him talk to her, telling her how much we loved her. When we got released, we went back home to Harmony and had to make a drive all the way to Charlotte to see her. Traffic is terrible and it started snowing. I was going into a panic attack and he took the moment to reassure me and calm me down and hold my hand and remind me we will be there soon. We went back and forth for six months to see her. Finally, we got to hold her. We were so excited we had been waiting for months for this. I've never cried so much in my life until I saw him first hold her. You could tell at that moment she was forever going to be her daddy's little girl. He couldn't stop talking about it, and the day we brought her home, he was nonstop talking to her on the way home. He made me so happy (laughs) on the days I felt like giving up and on the days I felt like I just couldn't do anything anymore. He stayed by my side and reminded me how beautiful and strong I am and that our little girl needs me and that no matter what, he was going to be right there to pick up the pieces. No matter what, he is still here. And our three-year-old is definitely a daddy's girl. Oh, I love that. Oh, Oh, sweet. Daddy's little girl. I know. I love that. We have our very last written submission, and then we'll go into the beautiful voicemails that we have. But this one is from Megan. And she writes, Hi, DNM. This past year, my husband Matt's first Father's Day was very different than we expected. Our daughter was born the day before at 37 and 3 via an emergency C section, and she was unexpectedly in critical condition. She was life flighted to a higher level NICU in another state hours after her birth. So, for my husband's first Father's Day, he drove to Delaware to see our daughter and pick up our mothers from the airport. He helped connect me with our friends so I wouldn't have to sit alone in the hospital when he was driving to our baby. He coached me to ask for help with washing pump parts so I wouldn't aggravate my incision. And those few days before I was discharged, Matt somehow held our new family together between different states, 
driving hundreds of miles to shuttle drops of milk and be with his daughter and wife, and Father's Day will forever hold these blurry, traumatic, but so special memories for me and for us. I am so proud and thankful to be Matt's wife and partner in sickness and in health, and I couldn't ask for a better father to our daughter. Mm-hmm. I oh, love that. You guys, these stories are so lovely. They are so lovely. Sweet. Well, we have some beautiful voicemails to include in the episode, so we will hop into those next. Hi, this is Sarah in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I'm six years in July removed from our preemie NICU journey. My husband was or is my rock. He walked through the long halls to the NICU with a little syringe of my milk when I couldn't bring myself to go uh, because I was filled with grief and self-blame. He lived in our living room with me when I refused to go upstairs having to walk past the unfinished nursery. Um, And he courageously went back to work, leaving our little family in the NICU. And then again, when we finally came home, he was always there for me. And he sacrificed so much for us. But I felt the most deeply supported and seen by him most recently as I've worked through my own healing journey. This Mother's Day, he wrote me a beautiful letter thanking for me thanking me for being a brave mom, willing to risk everything for our kids. And thankfully stood by me while I tried to find myself again, recognizing that I was not and am not the same woman he married. Happy Father's Day, Carl. Um, My name is Samantha Nichols. Uh, I live in Billings, Montana, uh, and I'm sharing a response um, for the podcast prompt. Um, I was planning to have a natural birth uh, last September, September 15th is when my baby girl was due, Um, and I went into labor July 23rd. Um, She ended up being born on July 24th at 32 weeks, and my husband and I had not talked about um, what we would do in case of a hospital birth, um, let alone a C-section, which is what I ended up having. Um, so we were both very surprised and kind of out of our realm when it came to going into surgery, um, after three hours of pushing to get my baby girl out. Um, and I was so scared, uh, that I really didn't have anything, any knowledge or, um, you know, direction to give my husband. Uh, so he held my hand through it. Um, and then one thing he did that I actually didn't know he did while, after she was born was, I uh, ask if we could get the placenta um, because even though it's not something he believed in, I really wanted to have it encapsulated and like a tincture and everything. And so um, he definitely went outside his comfort zone asking if he could get my placenta. They ended up saying no, um, but I was just so taken aback that he took that initiative because he knew that it would make me happy um, at a time where, you know, we really didn't know what we were up against. Um, and then in the, the same breath, he, he took action and stayed with me until he knew I was safe and he knew that the surgery was successful and then went, um, with our baby girl into the NICU to be with her, um, until I woke up. So he just, he knew exactly what to do in a time where no one knows what to do. So, um, that is really where he, he stood and shined, uh, during the process. My name is Heather Bethel and I'm from Dublin, Georgia. The biggest thing that made me feel supported by my spouse during our NICU journey is the fact that we were right in the middle of a home remodel when we went into unexpected preterm labor with our twin boys. And obviously we couldn't leave that, you know, undone. We had twin boys to bring home. So my husband not only, you know, came up and spent time with me in the NICU, but he came back to our home an hour away from the NICU, worked on it every single day after work, and drove back up to the hour away NICU every single night to see our babies and spend the night with me at the Ronald McDonald house just so I didn't have to be alone. And I remember the nurses saying that they couldn't believe he was doing it and how tired he had to be, but that was just such a big example of what an amazing provider he is and how he just made it work. It wasn't ideal, it wasn't a perfect situation at all, but for our three month stay, he did that every single day to be able to support me, to support our babies, but also, you know, be such a provider for our family and our home. And I'm just so grateful for him for that. 
Hello, my name is Alyssa from Colorado Springs, Colorado. I'm calling because I wanted to respond to the prompt, and I wanted to say that my husband showed amazing courage as a NICU parent. Um, once we got home from the NICU especially, in the NICU he was of course amazing, but I feel like I was kind of the one doing a lot of the skin to skin, but once we got home, I got really sick. I have um, end stage kidney failure, and I actually had my baby on dialysis, and when I got home, I got super, super sick to where I could barely stand up, and it was like enough that I would almost pass out. It was enough to just walk from one room to the next without almost passing out, taking care of my kiddos. Anyway, so it was hard for me to take care of the baby when I got home. I did it, but it was just really difficult. I was very sick. So my husband really stepped in. He would work full time. He would come home and he would take care of the kids and let me rest because of just the day that I had had and how sick I was. He was amazing. He took care of me. He did my dialysis every single night. He fed my son and did all of his G-tube feeds every time he was home and every time he could. He took care of my daughter with her needs. Um, he helped with my my son's oxygen tank, um, which was a struggle for us in the beginning. He just, he was so amazing. And I can't thank him enough for all the support he showed me and my NICU baby and my daughter during that time. It was a hard year, but we got through it. And now I've had a kidney transplant and I'm finally able to take care of my kiddos again. My hubby is still super supportive, but now we're more of a team and I'm so thankful for that. My name is Dana. I'm from West Palm Beach, Florida. And in um, November 20th, I was rushed in to the hospital 10 weeks, uh, 10 centimeters dilated, 10 weeks early. And within 20 minutes of being there, I was being rushed into the OR to deliver my son. Um, my boyfriend um, was there. And the whole time I'm, you know, asking, like, why is this happening? Why is this happening? And he's just calm, so calm and just telling me, like, I don't know, but you've, you got this. We got this. It's fine. Um, we're self-employed. We work very hard. And that week was Thanksgiving week, which was our busiest week of the year pretty much the holidays are crazy for us and um i was rushed in that week of thanksgiving and he took care of everything made sure that the business was up and running everything was going as smoothly as possible even though our lives were flipped upside down and um Every single night, he came to the hospital and got up stupid early in the morning to get ready to work. And I will never forget him coming to the hospital every single night just to sleep next to my bed. And finally, the last night, I just told him, just go home. It's fine. Just go home. Go sleep in our bed. I'm jealous. I would love to sleep in my bed right now. Um, but... He he was my my rock in in a very dark place, and I will never never thank him enough for what he did that week. It was it was a lot for anybody, and and he held it down as best as he could in spite of everything that was going on around us. But we're we're six months postpartum, and we're doing great. Everything's going great, so. If you don't think that there is goodness ahead, there is, there is. Oh, well, Mamas, this was such a beautiful episode. Thank you to each and every one of you for submitting your story. And um, whether it was written or via voicemail, it's just such a joy to honor these NICU dads and partners that stepped up. And if there's any NICU dads listening, again, we just want to reiterate how thankful we are for you and that your role is just truly essential. So thank you for everything that you do both in and out of the NICU. And we just, just hope you feel celebrated and honored this Father's Day. So happy Father's Day and happy Partner's Day to everybody who celebrates. And we hope that you guys have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. 
Thank you so much for listening to the Dear NICU Mama podcast. If you loved this episode, we'd be so grateful for a review. For more ways to connect with the Dear NICU Mama sisterhood, check out the links in the episode description. 